Hey, hey, everybody, welcome on in. It's time for Clay Share Live. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and this is our weekly broadcast that we do. Every week we have a fun, free clay tutorial, and this week we have Michael Harbridge from Learn Fired Arts joining us again. We have had such a fabulous month with Michael, and he's with us tonight and next Wednesday as well. So he's going to be showing us how to make these clay leaf and poinsettia draped bowls and vases. So it's a two for one. You're getting bowls and vases or vases, depending on how you want to say it. It's entirely up to you. So this has been a really fun month. I've had so much fun following along with Michael and making my own versions of his, you know, after he teaches it. And then I spend some time in my studio making more of them. It's been very inspiring. Um, I'm actually going to be doing in prime time, we're making these little ghost smokers. And yeah, I will be using Michael's cones for them, but don't worry. If you don't have them, I have one, two, three other options for you. So there's lots of ways to make these little ghosties. All right, let's head on over and see how Michael is doing and learn how to make these bowls and vases. Hey, Michael, how you doing? That's good, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm so glad to have you back with us again for another week. Yeah, it's hard to believe a whole nother week has gone by, but time flies so when we're having fun. <clears throat> Exactly. Right, well, we're making clay things. Yep. So tonight we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys how to clay puzzle these shapes. We're using the bark texture on here, but you can use any texture that you want. And then we're gonna make the leaves and the berries, and we can decorate these pieces. And I'm gonna set this one down. And we're also gonna do, as Jessica mentioned, the poinsettias. And so this is a, a new bowl shape. Tip this on its side so you can see it a little bit better. And we're going to do the poinsettias. I'm going to show you how to do those. And we're going to do it on a really big bowl. And about an hour ago, I had this idea of something more to do on the piece. So I'm going to show you something in addition to the poinsettias here. So I'm going to set that one aside. And then I want to give you guys a little sneak peek. This is a wreath that I did as well. And this is a, a live that I'm going to do in November. I've got a little bit more work to do on this. But you can do this basically the same technique with these leaves and the berries and the vines and things, and you can turn it into wreaths. And I think a poinsettia wreath, a holly uh, leaf wreath, or these leaves done in fall colors, spring colors, um, would really be kind of fun. So we're going to be working with um, clay puzzling forms for this. You can also throw pieces on the wheel or do some type of hand building process to make your basic shape. The nice thing about the clay puzzling molds is they are two pieces of bisque um, that, that go together when we get to these three-dimensional shapes. The cones are just a one piece and some of the clay pots are one piece, but most of them are two piece. We do our clay work on the inside and these are earthenware bisque, so they absorb moisture. So when we press the clay inside there, usually the molds can be opened up right away and your piece can be taken out and then we're gonna use the formal leaf, the rubber leaf forms, to make our leaves. If you don't have these, you can use real leaves. And the nice thing about these in the middle of winter, I'm in Wisconsin, it's hard to get real leaves in the middle of the winter. And so these can be used all year long. And there's lots of different shapes and um, sizes of leaves. Um, these were all made from originally from real leaves. So the veining and things that you see on these leaves that is the actual veining that was on the real leaf that was picked off of a plant at some point. So I'm going to show you, I've got a, a big bowl here that's all set to go. I started making some of the poinsettia leaves for that big bowl. Um, but I want to show you, for those of you who haven't um, done the clay puzzling process, I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to, I'm going to flip the camera down here. We're going to use a smaller bowl because it'll go a little bit quicker to show you. But um, some of the, the molds, like the vase that I used, this one is a two-piece mold, but the lines go vertically on it. And so when this mold is opened up, they come with a Velcro strap. And when you open that up, you've got both halves of your mold. And so on a vase mold, you're going to do your clay work on the inside, starting on the bottom, work your way up the sides and you're gonna fill in both halves. And then when you go to put those molds together, once that clay is in there, you kind of wrap your hands around it. So as you flip that over, that clay piece doesn't wanna flop out. And then you flip that over, you put the two halves together, you attach the Velcro strap, and 
then you, if you can get your hands on the inside, you reach your hands in and you press it together along the seam line. Um, if you can't get your hand inside the opening, we're going to use a press tool. And so we have um, this press tool that comes with or without a light. It's got a foam ball end, and you'll use that to reach inside and press it together along that seam line. Turn the light on there, and you'll press it together along the seam line. Um, and that's how you do it with these molds that have vertical lines. But what I'm going to use today is nice because a lot of these big bowls are wide enough that I don't actually even use the Velcro strap. So I usually take and put that aside and I do all of my clay work on the inside. Now you can take pieces of clay and you can just tear them off of a block. And the more pieces and the more you break this up, the more lines you'll get in your piece. And I'm gonna show you this big bowl that I've got ready here. This has about 20 pounds of clay on this bowl. This is a big bowl. But you can see all these lines where all of those pieces of clay, when I press it in the mold, where all those lines meet up. And so the harder I press that clay into the mold, the less I'll see these lines. But I really like the rustic look of those lines in the piece. And we're gonna add the poinsettias to this. So I'm not gonna press real hard and I'm gonna do some, some of the, the piece here and show you what it looks like. Let me get my clay out of the bag here. All right, so I can just take and tear off pieces like this and press them together and slightly overlap them a little bit. The more pieces I do, the more lines I'll have. If I don't want those lines, then I would try to do a bigger slab of clay, either with a slab roller or um, with a rolling pin. So I'm gonna show you a part of it done this way. And then I'm gonna pull this out and then I'll show you adding texture to the pieces first. So if I want a lot of texture showing, I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm gonna drag it across these pieces of clay to mash them together. I'm not pressing real hard. And I'll show you the difference between not pressing hard and pressing hard. So when I would open this mold up, if the whole inside of this was done, and I take this piece out, you can see all of the cool lines that you get in there. And that's where the term clay puzzling came along because they looked like a jigsaw puzzle. When I first started doing this technique, this was the basic technique. You wanted that texture and it looked like a puzzle. But watch what happens if I press it harder when I put that clay in, I press it down hard. And when I squish the pieces together, I press down hard. I will get rid of a lot of those lines. So now when I take that piece out, you can see there's still some little lines there, but they're not as deep and you don't get as much texture. So depending on how much texture you want, that's what you'll do. Now on the vase, I did the bark texture. And so you can take this, these bark texture pads were made from uh, the bark of real trees. These were some oak trees in our backyard. This is the original small bark texture. And then people said they wanted one with a little bit deeper texture in it. So this was from one area of the oak tree. And then this part of the tree, we found really deep texture. So you can take and you can press your pieces of clay first against that bark texture lift them up and you've got that cool texture in the piece. And then I can take those chunks and I'm just gonna rip this one apart and reuse these pieces. I can take those chunks with the bark side facing down, do the same thing. And I don't need these to be perfectly um, round pieces or all exactly the same. I'm just gonna take and tear off chunks, press it to pick up the texture and lay it inside the mold. Now this bark texture, because it has some really deep recessed areas in it, you have to be careful that you don't press too hard. If um, you go to peel it back and your clay starts ripping apart, do a little bit thicker pieces of clay. I probably have these pieces are probably about a half inch thick that I'm putting inside this piece because some of these raised texture areas on the bark stick up almost a, a quarter of an inch or even a little over a quarter of an inch. So I'm Michael, take, what size is, I'm sorry to interrupt, what oh, size is the bowl form that you're using tonight? This bowl form is, um, 
It is about a 10 inch bowl. Um, this is the BP, and I, this is the one that I didn't write the number down for. It actually comes by itself as a large bowl or they're smaller bowls of the same shape. And there's four bowls total in the set. So you can order just this bowl or you can order the set. There are also some taller versions of this one that I'll show you guys before the end um, that are deeper than this. And then we've got some that are wider. So on my website, learnfiredarts.com, you'll see um, there's a section in there. If you click on the shopping part, there is a section that has live event specials and new items. There's a category. And so what I try to do when I'm doing these lives with the ClayShare group is I'm placing all the items. I try to put all the items that I'm using in that area. So you're not searching as much on the website if you're just looking for the things that I worked with, but there's lots of other stuff on the website. So um, each week when I do a new live, I change the items. Um, like today, earlier today, I went in and I changed the items and I put the, the hashtag or the number sign and then one in front of all the items that I'm using tonight. And um, that makes it that they come up first on the page with that number one in front of them. So it makes it easier, but you can scroll through. There's lots of categories on our website with lots of, of different items. All right, so I'm just continuing to press lift and place these inside the bowl. Now, some of the bowls, this real big bowl that I'm gonna show you guys in a minute, the top of it comes around and it's got this opening and I can still get my hands in, but the top really comes around. And so you always wanna start doing your puzzling on the bottom of the mold. And then you'll see I'm, I've done the bottom and now I'm working my way up the sides. Um, sometimes people will try to start on the sides and then they end up, the pieces are flipping down inside as they're doing it. So kind of work your way from the bottom and up the sides. When you have one that comes way in like this, it's the same thing. Start on the bottom, work your way up the sides, and then you're actually pressing clay underneath this area on some of those that really large bowl um, to get that to stick inside the mold. And don't go too thin. The bigger your piece or the bigger your mold or your form, go a little bit thicker because we're gonna be adding leaves to the top of this. We're gonna be adding on the real big bowl, we're gonna do the poinsettia leaves and we're gonna add ornaments. We're gonna use the little sphere molds to make ornaments that will go in between all of those poinsettia leaves. I forgot to do that on the sample that I made. And then, I, like I said, about a half hour ago, I was like, oh shoot, I forgot to do that. So we're gonna do that tonight and I'll show you how to do that as well. All right, I just about have this all filled in and I can go up as far as I want inside this mold. I can go all the way up to the edge or I can leave it kind of jagged along the edge because I'm gonna be adding, um, the leaves around the top of this, I want to go all the way to the edge on here because I want that nice edge to be able to attach the leaves. And I can make the top, you'll see some of this clay is sticking up a, a little bit above the edge and that's okay. I want this to kind of have an uneven edge. Um, some people like to cut it off perfectly even with the top, that's fine too but I kind of like the rustic look with this bark texture where I have a jagged edge so it looks like it was real bark. And if we paint it properly, we should get that look of, of bark as well. A few more pieces, and then I'll show you how we're gonna press this all together, and then we'll pop it out of the mold, and we'll start adding our leaves. And you want to be careful too that you don't go super duper thick in some areas and really thin in other areas because you can run the risk of when these pieces dry that it will shrink quicker in the thin areas and it'll stay wet in the thicker areas and you can run into some cracking. So try to get it kind of uniform in thickness. All right, so I've got the whole 
inside of this filled in with chunks of clay. I see a little spot, oops, down there where there's a little bit of white showing. And I'm not concerned because when I do the mashing now, I'm going to just take my finger again and I'm going to go inside and I'm just going to drag my finger across. I don't want to lose the texture that I put on all these chunks of the bark. So I'm just dragging my finger across trying not to press down real hard. I just want to attach the pieces in here to one another, and I'm just kind of dragging the clay wet into wet. I don't need to add water. I don't need to score. I don't need to add slip. This is a, a nice clay body I'm working with. Um, continental clay is somewhat local to me, several hours away, but I get their clay shipped in and um, I'm working with their Raku clay body. And I really like this Raku clay body because I can do low fire glazes on it and it works, or I can do uh, mid range glazes and it works. Or if I decide I want to Raku fire it, I can do that as well. And I was thinking about doing a bowl with leaves and doing Raku glaze on this bark and then wiping it back. The, my Jade Gloss Raku Glaze, I really like that when I wipe it back on this bark texture because the glossy glaze catches in all of the details of the bark. And then on the areas where you wipe it back, where there isn't any glaze, then that fires out kind of a grayish black color. So you get a combination of a matte grayish black on the highlights and then a shiny, a lot of time metallic coppers and greens and purples and fuchsias down in all of those details. Now, if you can't get your finger inside this mold, you could also use the press tool and just drag that across to smooth out. Sometimes it can be a real workout on your, your fingers as you're dragging around in there. So if your fingers get sore, just take that press tool and drag it around. Again, you're not pressing straight down that you lose the texture. Now, because a lot of the inside of this bowl shows and I've got a lot of marks in there for my fingers. I'm just going to take a washcloth that's got some nice texture and this is dry and I'm just going to take and just tap that on the inside and it will add just a little bit of a texture to the inside. I don't want to again press too hard and lose all of my bark texture but that way when people see the inside of this bowl it's not full of finger mark or streaks and finger mark lines inside. And you could use any type of uh, anything with texture that's flexible enough to go on the inside. I like those, um, I have a sister-in-law that crochets washcloths and those actually add great texture because they are real dimensional. Then I'm gonna take and I'm going to pop this mold apart. Sometimes it will stick a little bit. And so I'm gonna pull the top of the mold off and here's what we've got. And then I'm gonna take and just flip this over and I'm going to lift the bottom off. And then I've got a board here that I will put, but look at that cool bark texture on the bottom, cool bark texture on the sides. Now, sometimes where those two pieces of the mold meet up, you might get a little bit of a line. And if I do get a little bit of clay that came through between those parts, I can just rub that with my finger. I don't like to use a lot of water on wet clay. A lot of times in workshops, people way overdo it and they um, end up having their piece collapse because they're working in a puddle of wet clay. I'm just bending these top edges in so I get that nice jagged look to it. Now, real leaves or rubber leaf forms, you can make um, the leaves. I'm going to show you a few different leaves here and explain some of the tricks and advantages and disadvantages to some of these. Okay, I've got a, all right, I got a good representation here. So there's a couple different types of maple leaves. And originally when we bought formal leaf, this was the maple leaf. And this leaf, it's a beautiful leaf. It's got great texture. It's great for doing impressions in clay. When you start trying to cut this leaf out or pull the clay out, it gets really fragile 
in these areas here. And a lot of times it's, it's really hard to, to get that clay out and then to peel it away and not have it rip or tear in that really skinny area in there. So um, we had a maple tree in our yard. And so we came out with a second set of maple leaves and we called them Wisconsin maple, where they don't have as deep of a, a cut down in and they're a lot easier to make dimensional leaves. So I'm gonna show you this one first. And then I'll show you the other one, just doing an impression. So I can take and I can um, roll out a slab of clay to do this with the rubber leaves, or I can just do like I'm doing here and flatten a big piece of clay. And again, I'm staying probably close to between a quarter to a half an inch. I don't wanna go too thin. And I can take that leaf and press it into the clay. I could take and roll this through the slab roller if I wanted, but it honestly goes a lot quicker if you just do this by hand. And I'm working my way around, pressing the leaf into the clay. So the leaf, the rubber leaf or the real leaf, if you're working a real leaf, real leaf is flush with the clay. And that's gonna give us a nice impression. Now you could lay this down and you could cut around the edges with a needle tool or a wooden tool. I, pre yeah, I prefer, to just go like this and tear away the excess clay. Now this doesn't take away every bit of clay, like cutting around it will, but look at how much quicker it is to just rip this. And so I'm basically holding the leaf and I'm pulling the clay upward and ripping it off on the edge. Now this is gonna give you a really thick, clunky looking leaf. And so we want it to be thick in the middle, but to give the illusion that it's thin, I just take my thumb and I bevel and I kind of pinch the clay on the edge of the leaf. And I work my way around on all of the sides. I usually though leave it thick at the bottom. And the reason I leave it thick at the bottom is in order to peel this away, I need to have kind of a little bit thicker area near the stem there. I can go up to here and here, but I'm leaving it a little bit thick just in this area. Um, I'm going to flip the leaf over. I'm going to look for any little chunks of clay here that need to be ripped away. Sometimes in these joints, I'm just taking my finger and pulling that clay up in the, the little indentations there. So now I've got a nice leaf. The edges are beveled all the way around, except on, on the very bottom here. And then I can take and I can grab that stem and take the clay and pull it away. Now, if you try to pull it apart, and the clay sticks to the leaf, the rubber leaf, or your real leaf, and it starts, the clay starts ripping and tearing, it's usually you've got it too thin. And so a lot of times people want to make these leaves super thin, but it doesn't peel away very well. And with real leaves, sometimes you'll get, you know, they'll rip apart. So make sure you have enough leaves um, to work with. Um, the rubber leaves, I've used some of these in workshops for years and um, just continue to reuse them over and over. So we've got our first leaf and then I'm gonna take this clay and I'm gonna just take and it's still soft enough. And really compress this, slap it together. And I'm gonna show you the difference now with this other maple leaf and I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna press this leaf in to show you what a great impression this leaf leaves. And I'm if I ever do this in, a, in a, just a slab of clay to make a bowl, I use that same washcloth on my slab of clay and I take and press over it while the leaf is in there. That way I don't get fingerprints all around the leaf. I get this nice light texture. So if this was a big slab of clay and I was pressing a bunch of leaves into it, I would leave the leaves in. I would go around, press it with a towel. And then when I take and pull this leaf out, I get, get a great, great impression. And I, and I love these leaves for making impressions in clay. But like I said, tearing that clay away in the little areas there can be a challenge. Now the oak leaves are also a really popular leaf and there's three different sizes of the oak leaf. And so if I take an oak leaf, I'm actually gonna grab the bigger one, it'll be easier to see. If I take that leaf and do the same thing, press it in to the clay so that it's flush. Now I tear away. And you will get really fast at this. I know the first few times people make leaves, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, flip it over, bevel the edges. 
Um, people, you know, take some five minutes to make their first leaf. I've probably done thousands of leaves in my lifetime and um, it goes really fast. Now, this also has some deep, oops, some deep areas in it. And sometimes I can get my finger underneath there and just pull up to pull out that clay. If I can't get my finger in there, that's where a wooden tool comes in handy. And I go from the bottom and I just pull up and pull that clay out of those deep indentations if my finger is too wide to get into those areas. And then peel it away and I've got my oak leaf. So you'll make lots of leaves for your piece and do different sizes. Um, there's oak, there's the Wisconsin maple, dogwood, there's four different sizes of dogwood. This is a really nice leaf, has really good detail and texture. Again, press it. And these leaves that are kind of a traditional leaf shape go really super fast because you don't have any indentations or areas on there where you need to dig in. So I've got a dogwood leaf. Um, mum leaves are great. There's four different sizes of those. Have a little bit more clay here. We're going to do, I'm just going to do a cluster of leaves on here, show you guys how to do the berries and the vines. I won't do leaves to go all the way around this bowl during the live. The mum leaf, same thing. Press it in, rip it away, bevel. Leave it thick at the bottom, go back and pull up in areas where there's little tight indentations. Peel the leaf away and I've got a mum leaf. Uh, we'll make one, one more leaf here. We're gonna do a dahlia leaf. There's also four sizes of the dahlia. They've got great texture. They've kind of got a little bit of a, a jagged edge on them. Same thing, press it in, make it flush, tear away, bevel the edge. And these two are like a traditional leaf where they are pretty easy to crank out fast because there isn't any indentations on there. And if you end up getting, you know, when you go to pull this apart, if this gets a little chewed up on the end, it's okay because that usually is gonna kind of get buried in this technique. So don't worry if your end gets a little chewed up there. Now, when we go to add these leaves, um, I am going to do some scoring and some slipping with these. Um, the bark texture that's on here really is almost like it's scored already, but the back of the leaves are pretty smooth. So I'm gonna take and do some, some scoring. If you don't have one of these, Zem makes these little retractable tools. Look at these little points on there, and then it pulls back and it retracts inside. How I've over the years, I have poked <laughs> myself so many times with needle tools when I'm reaching into a box or a bag when I'm doing a workshop and I've tossed them in somewhere. Um, these I love because I can, if I remember to retract it, sometimes I forget to retract it and I still poke myself, but they're great because they do lots of lines. Now I've mixed up a little bit of a a slurry or a slip here with some dried up raku clay and some water. So it's a nice creamy. Um, I'm gonna dab a little bit of this on. I'm gonna figure out where I want this leaf. And then as I push that on gently, I kind of go like this and I twist it a little bit. And that way those score marks and the texture of the bark kind of lock together. And I'll do this for each of the leaves that I'm going to attach. Add a little bit of slip figure out where I want this leaf, kind of twist it. Now on this piece, I'm gonna take, and you can see I let the end of the oak leaf cover the area where I maybe squished a little bit of the base of it where the stem was. And I'm gonna have the stem of the oak leaf kind of overlap that. I'm gonna add my mum leaf. And these leaves you wanna do in different directions. You don't want them all necessarily facing going in one direction. So you'll see that I might now take this mum leaf and I'm gonna tuck this under that one a little bit and take and have that kind of going into the inside. And then I'm gonna do 
my dogwood leaf. I'll take that and I'm gonna have that overlapping the oak leaf. And then we'll do the dahlia. And I'm gonna have that coming out. So you can see the leaves, I'm just adding all around the edge on here. Now I would continue doing leaves around the top. I think I've got another large, I'd started making some leaves for this project before we went live. So I've got another large um, Wisconsin maple here. Attach that one. All right, and I and I want to have the leaves with a little bit of waviness to them. You know, I don't want them perfectly flat sticking out. So then I'll go and I might bend the tips a little bit. But I also keep in mind that this piece, I don't want like tips sticking straight out like this because that's just asking for that to get broken off. So I might take and bend them down a little bit, give them a little bit of character. And then if I want to add some berries. I can make simple little berries just by rolling balls of clay. And I'm just going to do a little cluster of three of these. And I get a lot of times in workshops when people are rolling balls of clay, they go like this and they go really wide with their hands like this. And they end up with like a peanut shape or an oval shape. And so the trick to that is in the middle of your hand, don't go so wide out like this, just go real small and that you'll get a nice perfect little ball of clay. Then I will score these, which isn't the easiest thing to do. Where I'm gonna add these on, there's a lot of texture from the leaf. So I'm gonna take, dab a little bit of slip and I'm gonna kind of hold this from the inside as I take that berry and kind of give it that little twist to lock those score marks in. I usually do little clusters of three berries every once in a while. I might have one random berry, but I always like that odd number. Then with this basic wooden tool that comes in most basic pottery tool sets, this end on it has a perfect little end for making my indentations for where the stem was on the berry. And so I'll take that and I'll poke it in and I'll hold this up to the camera so you guys can see this better, but I'll poke that in. And it gives me a really nice indentation in my berry to look like where the stem was on there. Now, last week I gave you guys a sneak peek of this next berry. So this is more of a raspberry or a blackberry. I use this fabric, it's called Tool. You can get this at most fabric supply stores. And it's got this open mesh type design on it. And I'm going to roll out some balls of clay. And again, I'm going to do a cluster of three of these. Some might be a little bit bigger, some might be a little bit smaller. And then I take this fabric and I wrap it around that piece of clay, that ball of clay. And then on the bottom, I'm pinching. And so as I pinch this, it's kind of bringing this to a, a point on the bottom, but it's more about forcing that clay to go up into that fabric and actually start to extrude out. And once it starts to come through the fabric, then I gently pull that fabric back and pull it away. And I've got my wonderful little berry. The stem on there, I usually don't need that much stem. So I'll pinch a little bit of that off and I'll set that aside. And then I'll do my next berry. And the same thing. And I so I pinch and I kind of turn it and I pinch and I turn and I pinch. As soon as I see it coming through the fabric, I pull it away. Now, if you pinch too much and you get that clay coming out and it's really sticking out, sometimes when you pull that fabric back, it'll actually rip off some of those little points on there. So practice a little bit, but you'll you'll get the feel for it really quickly. Once you have one where it rips all of those little chunks off of the top, you're going to know that you've gone a little bit too far. Now, wherever I want to add some of these berries, 
Um, I'm going to kind of score the bottom of this, add a little bit of slip. And as I put it on, give it a little twist. If you don't score pieces, especially when they're round pieces, um, and you don't kind of twist them when you put them on, if you have trouble with pieces that you stick together falling apart, it could be that I see people, they'll, they'll put a little water on it, and they stick it on there and they leave it. And then when it dries, the barrier, or whatever it is, falls off. And that's usually because you don't score it well, and you don't kind of give it that little that little twist to get that to adhere really well. So I'll usually go around, and once I've put all my leaves on there, I'll look for spots where I want to add some berries, and I'll add some berries here and there. And then you might want to add some little vines or tendrils on here. And so I usually start out with a little coil of clay. And on my foam pad here, I'm going to take and I'm going to roll this and I'm tapering it at one end. So I'm working that and sometimes I get a little dryness on the end that breaks off. That's OK. I can take and roll this coil, taper it on that end, and then decide where I want to add this. Now on this bowl, because it's not a real high bowl that I can drape down the sides as much, I might end up going like this and kind of bringing it around the top. And so I'm going to, wherever I'm going to attach this, I'm going to score, I'm going to score on the inside here where I'm going to attach it, add a little slip. And as I attach that on the inside, I wiggle it. And then I'm going to bring this around, twist it around. Oops, the end of this, my hands are so dry that the end of this just fell off. Um, pinch that back down, and then I might add a little bit of slip under here where it touches, a little dab of slip after scoring, and I've added a little tendril vine coming down. And so I'll go and I'll add, you know, some vines here and there, and then let these pieces dry really well, fire them, and then decorate them. All right, so I'm going to set this one aside, and I'm going to bring out the giant bowl. And I've got my poinsettia leaves here. Some of us at Clayshare have um, problems with tendrils where we just can't stop putting them on our pots. It's just, you know, a, I've noticed that a, and I've heard you talk about it. <laughs> I'm not sure if, if you're talking about yourself or somebody else, but I've. Well, I, I might be included that. in that group. <laughs> yeah. No, and I, I, yeah. I tend to overdo it too. And like when I'm doing I, workshops I on them. the road and people add a lot of them. I'm like, you guys, you're transporting <laughs> these home, you know? And so usually I'll tell people, you know what, make them if you want, or take some clay home and make them once you get home and add those on. All right. They're just so fun to make. They are. Yep. So I've got a whole bunch. I've got a whole sheet here of a point set of leaves that are already made. Same process with those. What's nice with the point set of leaves too, is you just, there's, it's a smooth edge. So there's not a, a difficult time getting that clay pulled away. I've got this big bowl. This one, I didn't use the bark texture. I just used the pieces of clay. And this is one where it really comes in that I was talking about. And this is where when I'm pressing the clay on the inside, I start on the bottom, press up the sides, and then I'm going underneath putting these pieces of clay inside the mold. And this one, the mold lifts off on the, the top. That is, oops, it's this mold here. And so this top piece lifts away like this and then you've got a bottom piece and so on this one i mentioned we're going to do some ornaments on here as well so i'm going to use this is the smallest sphere mold and this we're going to take and i'm going to flatten out a piece of clay that should fill in half of this mold again it'll be between a quarter to a half an inch thick and i'm going to take and press this into the mold and then I'm going to tear away the excess. And then I'm just going to pop that out of the mold. And so I've got a half a, a dome shape here. I'm not worried about being perfectly smooth. I can always go back later and smooth this out where the clay kind of sticks out on the edges here. I'm just going to kind of pinch that in. You could also make these probably just doing like a little pinch pot try to get it real rounded. And we're going to start out with one of these half 
what's going to be an ornament. And I'm going to score this. Because this area that I'm attaching it to is kind of smooth, I'm going to score that area a little bit. I'm going to add my slip. And I'm also going to put a hole in where this is going to go. Because if I completely seal this around the edges, there you could get some moisture trapped in there later. So I'm going to just attach that, give it a little wiggle to make sure it's attached well. I'm not worried about any openings on there because what we're going to do now is we're going to take and we're going to start adding poinsettia leaves. And I always work around the ornaments when I do this. So the ornament is the first thing that I put on and then I decide where I want my poinsettia. And so this poinsettia, I'm going to have coming up on the top. And I'm going to start with my biggest leaves, which are in the back. And this piece came out of the mold. I probably took this out because it was such a big piece. I made this piece earlier today. I left it in the mold for probably two hours. And then I pulled it out. And it's, it's still soft that I could bend it. But it's firm enough that it can stand on its own. And where the base of that poinsettia leaf is, I'm just going to take and I'm going to squish this into the body of the vase. I don't have to score and slip because I'm really squishing this into the piece. And I'm going to take another big leaf and I'm going to mash it in and take another one and I'm going to mash it in. And I usually start out with three large leaves and then I go to the mediums. There's two different shapes of the large leaf. There's two different shapes of the medium leaf. And then there's three small leaves. And so then in the middle of those big leaves, I'm going to add um, a medium leaf. And again, I'm going to squish it down in the middle. I'm going to do another one here. Squish it in the middle. And one more coming up this way. And I'm going to squish it in the middle. Then I'm going to take the small leaves. There's one that's this shape. There's one that's a little bit longer. And there's one that's a little bit smaller. And I'm going to take and put those in the middle. And I'm going to squish those down as well. So every time I add a leaf in here, I try to kind of have it in the middle of two other leaves. And I'll hold this up once I have all three leaves on here and show you. Now, sometimes in the middle, I end up having to go with more than three leaves to fill this in. And I guess I didn't make a lot of the little leaves. Let me make a couple more small leaves here. I always try to go in threes and go with an uneven number. But sometimes as I put the, the small leaves in the middle, you have to go with four leaves or five leaves to get it to fill in properly. Do one more little leaf. I'm going to squish that in the middle. Now, in the middle, I could take and I could do little balls of clay or a little center in there and texture that. Or I could take a tool and I could take and poke a texture in the middle of those leaves. But what I like to do with the poinsettias, and I did this last year, I did a tree. And in the tree, now I think I glued these lights in. Nope, I didn't. I'm just grabbing some of the lights out of the tree back here. Forgot to bring some lights out. These little plastic lights that are designed for ceramic Christmas trees, um, they come in all different colors. And so you can poke holes in there with a, a hole punch or a straw. I'm just going to stick some of these in the middle and then I'll hold it up so you guys can see what it looks like. Of course, these are really sticking in the tree. I'm just going to put a few of them in here. I would probably do about eight or so holes in here. And the holes I would poke through with a, a hole or with a, a clay punch so that the holes are a little bit bigger. Because remember, this is going to shrink as it dries, it's going to shrink as it's fired. So if I just poke them in with these little holes here, 
it's going to shrink and these won't fit. So the holes should be about two to three times the size in the clay stage as the, the base of these. So if you don't have a hole punch, things like a toothpick would work or even a needle tool you could stick in there and work that into a circle. And then I'll continue my way around on here once I've got that first point set up. And then I will do another ornament. And this ornament was kind of down a little bit. The next one I might do right up toward the top. And then I would continue. There goes the phone. I forgot to unplug the phone down here. Um, I would continue with another poinsettia that would overlap. They're, tell, they're calling to tell you to add tendrils. <laughs> That's why, yeah. <laughs> Probably a phone solicitor. And down here in the studio, I usually unplug that phone because somebody always calls while I'm doing a live. Um, but I could continue then to add another poinsettia here. And then once I have that point set of done, then I might add another ornament that's down a little bit further. So the ornaments might be down a little further, up toward the top, down a little bit further. And I would make my way around this piece, adding my poinsettias. Now, some of these leaves are sticking straight up. So I'm. this is where I'm going to kind of go back and I'm going to kind of bend them down a little bit so that they're not going to get broken off real easily. And that's how I would continue working my way around all the way around the top of this. You're more than welcome to add tendrils to this as well. <laughs> um, I also thought about there's little holly leaves. And so I thought about adding some little holly leaves or doing one of these, probably a smaller bowl with holly leaves all around the top. We are going to, the reason I didn't do the wreath yet is because these wreaths, I want to do with holly leaves. And these little holly leaves, you would have to do so many of them to do a nice big wreath. And so we're going to come out with some bigger holly leaves, and those aren't ready yet to go into production. So that's why I scheduled it for the first week in November. I'm going to do a live on the wreath, and we're going to do, I'll show you guys a holly wreath, but it'll be with bigger holly leaves. These were made with real holly leaves. The ones that we're going to do now are ones that I've sculpted that are bigger and they have more detail. Some people, I, I've had some people say, oh, you know, the veining, you know, they want that traditional holly leaf where there's a vein down the middle and veins that go out. Well, on real holly leaves, this is a real holly leaf. They don't have those lines. They just kind of have wrinkles in them. And so these aren't as detailed as people want them to be. So we're going to kind of make some fake holly leaves to, um, fill that in and uh, offer something a little bit bigger and easier to use. Um, on here too, I did on my sample, let me pull the sample bowl back out here, let me move this out of the way. On my sample, I did do some berries and I thought about doing tendrils, but I was like, you know, with all of the, points of these leaves on here. I don't need, I don't have to have tendrils on there, but I could. Um, it looks beautiful could the way it back. is. Yeah, and I could go back and I'll just show you guys what it would look like if you wanna see with some tendrils, we'll make a <laughs> little coil here. And on this one, again, because this isn't a real tall bowl, um, I'm gonna make this and just kind of have this weaving in and out around the bowl. So I might take and have, you know, it tucked in here and it might twist around a little bit and it might go back in here. And then it might start out again over here and it might just twist around and go in back here. So you can, you can add some if you'd like and just intertwine them and have them hang down the sides if you want. Um, so yeah, that's, and so then finishing these, um, I'm probably going to do um, either colors for earth color concentrates or make a stroke and coat on them. And if you guys can see back there, that giant point set of tree that I'm pointing to up there, I'm going to try to lift that down. It's really heavy. I think there's about 75 pounds of clay on this. And 
this poor tree has traveled around and it's had parts of it get broken out because it is such a monster. But you worked on that. Did you do that last year or the year before? I, did. I think I did this yeah. last year, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And what I did on this one, the, the colors on here, I did um, colors for earth color concentrates. I'm going to hold this up close because you'll see some specks on there. There's mother of pearl on here, so it's very lustery in the lights. That's where I stole the lights out for this other one. Um, but I did a wash with a dark kind of turquoise color on there. And then I went back, so I, I brushed on, thinned it down, brushed it on, wiped it back with a sponge. And then I went back and I did kind of a dry brushing technique with her color concentrates and added other turquoise and blues and things on there. And then I took a stiff fan brush, or you can use a toothbrush, and I speckled it with black, turquoise, um, white, I did on there. Um, then I sponged clear glaze over that, fired it. This was done with stoneware, with a buff stoneware color. And then I put mother of pearl on and fired it one more time. And that, it, it's really hard to show in pictures and to show on the camera because of the reflection of the mother of pearl, but it, it turned out really cool. So I think on, on the bowl, I'm going to do some, uh, some reds and greens on there with the color concentrates and wipe them back and probably do some other pearl. I'm not sure what I'll do on the bowl. And then I'm going to do a point set of wreath for next month. I'm going to do the holly wreath for next month and uh, really have fun with that. So if we have any questions. So folks were asking about the lights. How do they work if you want to put lights? Like, how do you get them to illuminate? So in a bowl like that, you could lay like a string of Christmas lights underneath there. And if those little plastic parts poke all the way through the clay, let me pull one out here again. I, think I actually glued these in. That's why I'm having a hard time getting it out. So that little <laughs> stem of that, if that goes through the clay and goes to the inside of the piece, the light will catch on there and it will light all of those up. They're a real translucent plastic. Um, so I would just lay a, a string of clear lights inside of that bowl. Um, you could put some type of whatever type of lights inside there. You could put some candles down inside that bowl um, on the trees. And I'm going to show this next week. But what I do with the trees, if you have those pinch lights, a lot of the ceramic suppliers sell pinch lights. Um, or you can even get them sometimes in the Christmas department at, at uh, department stores. But I will take and I will make a coil, a thick coil of clay, and I'll squish that together. And I make a donut, basically. And I'm just dragging my finger over to do this. And then I take, and on the bottom, I take a wooden tool, and I make kind of a notch where the cord can come out like that. And then I make that hole big enough that a pinch light can pinch right into there. And then the cord goes out and then this sits underneath your tree or whatever form you've got that you're trying to light up. And it holds that pinch light upright. A lot of times people will put holes in the side of their piece and that light goes in there. And especially on trees, sometimes they put that toward the bottom and those little seven and a half watt or 15 watt light bulbs can get kind of hot and it will burn a table or something. I've seen that happen. And so you wanna to try to have that light bulb going straight up in there and not have it on its side that it could burn um, the surface that it's sitting on. And where would you send people to find the little lights um, that you're using? Surprisingly, I sell them on my website. We've got- There you go. <laughs> red, pink, green, crystal, yellow, just pink, purple, every color you can imagine. Um, they come in bags of 200 and they're a few dollars a bag. They're not expensive. So you can get them um, from yeah, Learn Fired Arts. Yeah, Perfect. and the plastic stars. I should put those. I didn't put those in the specials area. After we're done with the live, I'll go in and, and put those in the special area. I forgot about um, those lights as an option. So. And uh, Lisa, oh, Lisa Leslie ahead. would like to know if you still have the basket with the berries and leaves around the top edge. Because she I loves don't. it. Yeah, I did a, a, a live doing it was a woven basket where we extruded coils of clay and did it inside of a bowl. And uh, that was a very fragile piece. But yeah, we did the leaves and berries all around the edges of that one too. 
So this one is, I just wanted to show, this is a brand new mold. This is what I used to make that holly bowl. And that one you'll see on the website. And I took a picture, I put it up today of that clay piece right next to this, because people are always like, which one did you use? And so that one is the new wide bowl. That's the BP 567. Um, and that one is um, on sale, it's $10 off. And then that new large vase. So the only the two new molds are that bowl and this large, we call this the large ball bottom vase. Um, this one is $50 off this week for, for clay share. Now I did have a little bit of confusion. Some people were going in and ordering gourd molds last week and they were like, they're not on special for the original special. And so I don't know that I was real clear on that. The specials are good for a week after I do this live. So today is the 18th of October. So the special will be good until next Wednesday. At some point next Wednesday, those specials might come down and then the new specials of the day go up. So they're good for a week. Um, some of them like the cones because I'm gonna use the cones next week. They have just been on special the whole month. Um, so you've got about a week to get in there. And, and right now we're really, we're doing well on the orders. You guys have, have been very good to us with, with ordering. We really appreciate that. Um, by the end of this week, we're actually shipping now. Today I saw the next orders that'll be going out the next few days. We're working on the gourds that said they would ship late October. So we're a little bit ahead on those. So I think the furthest out some of you are is the middle of November. You might actually be getting them like earlier than the middle of November if things keep going really well with that. So um, cones were, I think by the end of the week, all the cones will be caught up. Um, and most other stuff, the spheres, you guys have ordered a lot of sphere molds again, and, and we're almost caught up on those too. So we've been keeping up pretty good. That initial, you guys love the chickens. And then Jessica showed glazing the gourds from last year. And we were really surprised at the number of gourds that we sold. Um, and again, it, I it, think it, the gourds are a must have. Like even more than the, I love the pumpkins, but I think the gourds are, you can do so much with them. Right. Like, yeah. I showed they, the turkey, you know, and people were like, so oh my much gosh. more than yeah. just fall. Yeah. Yep. They're a great yeah. body shape for sculpture, is what I love. That you yep. can do anything Absolutely. with them. Chickens. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I love your chickens too, Jessica. Oh, uh, thanks. I know. Well, I was inspired by you. So well, that's cool. Yeah. So any other questions before? Um, we head out everybody and we let Michael go and we do the giveaway. I didn't even mention we're giving away this week. We have a $50 gift certificate to learn fired arts. That's Michael's website. Oh, and um, Michael, I don't know if people realize the leaves that Michael was using. He makes those, he has them so you can get them from him. Yep. So don't go looking around elsewhere on the interwebs. They're not there. They're at learn fired arts. Yep. And you will find we do have a few distributors out there that sell them. And I'm, I, you know, sometimes we're out of them and somebody else might have them in stock. So it's, it's okay. We're the manufacturer. And so either way, we're selling them to you ultimately through somebody else. Fantastic. Well, if you all have any more questions for Michael, you can always reach out to him through his Facebook page or through learnfiredarts.com. Thank you for being with us again, Michael. Let's do the giveaway. Uh, because I know some lucky person out there can't wait to find out what they want to get. Thank you, Michael. All right, everybody. Another great week with Michael. I am really inspired. I'm probably going to have to go get those molds because I don't have those yet. And I love those two part bowl molds. I've been thinking of all these different things I could do with them. Um, and so I know Michael has a ton of ideas. There's just so many possibilities. Like we talked about with the gourd molds, you know, Michael made chickens with them. He's made turkeys and you could do any kind of bird. Yes, you can do gourds with them too, but there's so many different things you can use. They're not just limited to the one thing. So um, be creative and come up with some new ideas. All right, so this week we're doing a $50 gift certificate. We're doing one next week as well to learn fired arts. So if you didn't enter, you can't win tonight but you could win next week. So go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails. Premium members of Clayshare, you are always automatically entered in all of our giveaways. You don't have to do anything. There's no purchase necessary. You do not have to watch to win. We will email the winner and get them connected with Michael so they can get their prize. All right, so tonight's winner is going to be, ooh, it is Laura Smith. Congratulations, Laura Smith. 
You get to go shopping at learnfiredarts.com. I don't know, you're going to get some of those new two-piece bowl molds, or you're going to get some of the form of leaves, you're going to get some of the Christmas lights, so many different things. Now, next we're going to be making these cute little ghost smokers. If you don't know what a smoker is, well, it's like an incense burner, but you call it smoker because the smoke kind of comes out of his face and they're really, really cute. So we're going to be making these, um, but I did want to let everybody know we have a workshop coming up this Saturday. That's right. With Maria Sampson, we have a two-part workshop from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern. It's live online, so you can join me and Maria and learn about sculpting whimsical garden stacks. She's going to be doing a fish and a flower, and it's a two-parter, so it's this Saturday and next Saturday. If you cannot make the live, that's okay. You can watch the replay anytime you want. One amazing thing that we do here at ClayShare is we offer these fabulous workshops that are live, but we give you the replays forever. If you take online workshops, very few of them give you those replays forever. So it's not just two weeks from now, you have to watch it and it goes away, or a month's all you have. No, no, no. You can come back five years from now and watch that same workshop that you signed up for. So I guarantee it's the best value out there in online ceramic education. If you haven't checked it out yet, go to clayshare.com. You can check out all of our workshops, not just Maria's that's coming up, but we've had quite a few from some of the top names in ceramics. In the past, oh my gosh, Adam Field, Doug Peltzman, Sunshine Cobb, and so on and so forth. So many great people have been with us. You don't want to miss that. All right, so next week we'll have Michael join us again for our live. And then in prime time next week, I'm making teapots. So if you don't have anything planned for next Wednesday, come back and hang with me and Michael and have a good time making some fabulous clay projects. All right, everybody, I got to go make ghosts. So I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your week. Take care, be well, and as always, make great pots.